Welcome to our moon week. In light of the lunar eclipse that just passed, we will be decoding all six episodes of Moon Knight. So stay tuned. Mark rejects the fields of reeds and decides to go back and save Stephen. He admits to his stony counterpart that he's thankful for him existing and embraces his other self. Mark opens up to Stephen, even more telling him how he saved him, as he only survived because he was never alone, as Stephen was always there. Seeing as Stephen was full of hope, Mark admitted he failed him by protecting him from the truth, just as he slowly started to freeze in the sands. Mark then promises never to abandon him again as he tells him that Stephen was the superpower he always had as he places his heart in Stephen's hand. As Mark and Stephen are frozen in the sands, this sign of devotion is important because it explains how appreciative Mark is of Stephen. This willingness to reject perfection in order to save Stephen is a telltale sign of how deep their souls are truly connected. As the two seem to be forever lost in the duat, the gates of Osiris open and both men are brought back to life. This extremely selfless act that Mark commits has brought them back together, balancing the heart because up until this point they were moving under two motivations. Mark and Stephen embrace each other once again and the gods start fighting inside the chamber and the sands start to chase them like a tsunami. Racing to reach the gate, they receive some help from good old Tyrette, who uses her boat to slow down its momentum, allowing them to return to Mark's body. Back from the dead, Kanju senses and feels the pain within him, asking him if he wishes to live or die, prompting Mark to regain the ceremonial Moon Knight armor and become him once again. As Layla looked on horrified, Harold makes his first steps toward resurrecting Amit. Layla then runs over to Mark's body where she finds the golden scarab. Out on the highway, we saw the true power of Harold's new staff as he tears through the roadblock. As Layla weighs up whether to tackle him by herself, probably not the best idea. Tyred appears again, speaking through a corpse strewn across the roadside. She tells Layla that rescuing Kanju to resurrect Mark as their best bet of taking down Amit. Layla refuses the offer. She does not want to be anyone's avatar, including Tyred. Harold and his followers break into the Pyramid of Giza and destroy the other god's avatar in order to bring back Amit in her true form. He does tell the gods that you're judges, not warriors. Yo, the disrespect. Meanwhile, while this is going on, Layla sneaks in and finds Kanzu. We are then also shown for the first time Amit in her true form with her long braids. Yes, I mean, she was serving. We've then learned by Ahmed that Harold's skills are in balance and his soul will eventually be devoured by Ahmed. But he will serve her first. So while they brought Ahmed to life and they're having their conversation, Layla releases Kansu. I have to mention, I was kind of happy to see Kansu. Kansu also mentioned that he is weak in his form and he needs an avatar. I mean, he asks Layla, but she refuses. Kansu and Amit get into a nasty fight. Y'all, Amit was whipping that hair. We truly see how weak Kansu is without his avatar. So while this is going on, Layla runs into Osiris, who, unfortunately, his avatar is on his last leg. Osiris tells Layla that the only way to imprison Amit is to bind her to a mortal body. And this can only be done by an avatar. Layla realizes she needs to be someone's avatar. So who she calls out to? Towerette. And may I say, Towerette is thrilled. 
The fight scene was good. I loved seeing how Steven and Mark work together as one. And we see how truly powerful they are when they use both of their personalities to their advantage. Layla was also pretty cool. I mean, her outfit and just being Tyrant's avatar. I loved it. I also think the most intriguing part about the fight scene is there was a moment when Mark blacked out. The crazy part about this scene was that Mark said it wasn't him and Steven also said it wasn't him. This left me confused because I'm like who could it have been? Kansu? So this scene is complete with Amit being bound to Harold's body. With Amit being bound to Harold's body, they now can kill Harold, which will in turn destroy Amit. Kansu asks Mark to kill Harold, basically demands Mark to kill Harold. This will ensure that Amit can never escape. Mark refuses and he tells Kansu that according to their deal, he is no longer his avatar. So he don't have to do what he's saying. I was surprised at this part to see Mark taking the high road. Because I mean, that leaves the door open for this to happen all over again. But maybe that's what the producers want to leave that door open. Steven wakes up at a psychiatric hospital with Dr. Harrow beside him. Looking dejected as he states that this is what his reality looks like now. He asks Dr. Harrow, if the gods are real, to which Dr. Harrow calmly says no, as Mark and Steven appear to believe otherwise. As Dr. Harrow walks away, we see bloody footprints behind him and just start to wonder why he's bleeding. Mark and Steven think Harrow doesn't know as much as he leads on. Or does he? The duo promptly inform Dr. Harrow that they refute his diagnosis and they're going to save the world. Steven proudly chants later Gator. This is so significant as he tells his mom later Gator. He's introduced to the Gator like creatures. Everything in his head is already there. So what he is doing is basically reclaiming memories that he had and using them in different aspects and scenarios they eventually wake up in Steven's bed in the London apartment, surprised that their plan has worked. We return to a scene where Harrow is in the psychiatric hospital himself. He's ushered into a vehicle to which he is surprised to find Kanju awaiting him, boasting that he can't harm him. Kanju explains that since Mark had been freed, he was under suspicion that Layla was meant to be Kanju's next avatar. While he believes he doesn't need anyone else, Kanju lets Harrow in on a secret. Mark does not know how deeply troubled he truly is, Kanju says. He reveals Mark's other identity, Jake Lockley. Jake wastes no time, shoots Harrow before driving away in a limousine with SPKTR on the license plate. This makes for a dynamite second season we have ahead of us. Hope you enjoyed. Comment below on your thoughts of this edition of Decoded. Let us know what we miss. What did you get from it? Did y'all do some decoding? As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when we upload. Follow us in the community too because we will be offering updates, more exclusive interactions, polls, things of that nature. Stay tuned for the next episode and come back so we can vibe on it.